Hi, I'm Maggie the Music Teacher, and during our coronavirus shutdown, I've been teaching online. I do not love it, so I'm making some videos that might be a little helpful to my students and give us a little more interaction, and I've decided to make them public in case someone else finds them useful. I'm a flutist, but I was trained as a generalist, which means I'm kind of a jack-of-all-trades, master of none, except flute. So if you're looking for virtuosic top-shelf playing, this is not it. Uh, I don't have time to edit videos and make fancy videos, so most of these will be in one take, and that will include mistakes. If you think you can learn from that, fantastic. If it's not what you're looking for, move on now. You can see what a generalist does, and I hope you find something useful. This intro will be on the beginning of each video, so I'm going to put the information of what I'm doing down below. And if you want to skip this on future videos, forward ahead about a minute. That should put you about in the right place. On to the next video. <laughs> so, um, that's sort of circular breathing. I'm not good at it because I quit practicing it a year or two ago. Um, I just wanted to be able to do it. I, I don't, I have never used it in anything. I just wanted to be able to do it. So I learned to do it and then quit. But, uh, the thing that got me when I was learning to do it is a lot of the online help videos, um, use the straw in the water. If you've, if you've tried to look up videos for help on this, you've seen them. And I couldn't do it. And so I couldn't learn to circular breathe in the flute because the water thing didn't work for me. If it works for you, you kind of don't need this video, I don't think. I don't know. But um, it, it didn't work for me. So, and I'm going to come back to that straw in the water thing. I have tips now that can make it work for you if it doesn't. So I couldn't do it. And uh, I had an extra flute head joint that I that I played around with, um, and I I kind of I had the concept, you know, where you're you have a mouthful of air, and you're pushing the air out with your tongue, and this is the same kind of thing as as uh, the beatboxing tip I had, where you want to make sure your tongue is working, so you. Close the back of your throat. If you can hum, I'm going to plug this because it's too high in pitch. If you can hum and make sound come out of here, then you've got the right motion happening inside your mouth. So, um, so make sure you can make sound in your flute while you're humming. If you can, that's the motion you want to use to push the air out of your mouth. Okay, but the trick is, to be able to do it without stopping, you know. I'm not doing very well right now. Like I said, I haven't practiced. I got it pretty smooth, then I quit. So, um, the first thing I did to get better at this, I, I played around with the head joint the whole time I was doing this, and I'm gonna come back to that. But what I did first is I got an oboe reed, because oboe is, is probably the easiest instrument to do this on other than crumb horn, but you don't want to get a crumb horn, they're too expensive. Uh, you don't want to get an oboe either, you just need the reed, okay? And um, because we're under, um, we're at stay at home orders right now, I don't have an oboe reed, but I have a bagpipe practice chanter reed, which is almost the same thing. This takes a little bit more air than an oboe reed, so. And the trick is to get it to where, this is a little hard to do because your tongue can hit it. So you got to kind of angle it up in your mouth. And if it's an oboe reed. Right? 
you can put it in your lip. It's easier. So the trick, the first thing you want to do is you want to get the sound even. And I worked a very long time trying to do this. This did not come easy to me. And it's still a little uneven. You can hear it. You can hear it. I got pretty good at it. And what, what will usually happen first is even when you get the sound even, you'll get a hiccup. I'll see if I can do it. I probably can. You hear that old gong, gong. That's the back of your, of your, that's the tongue in the back of your throat when you're ready to breathe again. So you've got the, the back of your throat closed and you're pushing the air out. And when you're ready to breathe, when you open that, it creates a slight glitch in the airflow. And my first approach was to try to get my air moving faster, sooner rather. Um, and it, it didn't work. It wasn't effective. So what I started figuring out that worked for me was um, a yeah sound. I mean, feel. Yeah. So I'm going, yeah. So that's how my tongue is moving. And it's it very smooth, really smooth. That took me a long time. Um, I wish I could give you a better example, but I, I don't want to take the time to practice again. So this is as good. But if you practice, it will get better. I promise. And I found it doesn't matter if I puff my cheeks or not. Um, if you can control your cheeks, it, it supposedly is easier <laughs> if you puff your cheeks because you have more air. I, I don't find it easier. So I don't know. Oh, now I can't do it. Well, anyway, after I had the oboe read, I went to a bassoon read. And I don't have a bassoon read, but I do have a um, <clears throat> small pipe read. It takes more air. This is harder. And you hear my hiccup. So I'm getting there. You know, and I practiced on this. The one thing you got to worry about when practicing is you're, even though you're inhaling, you're not exhaling enough. So your CO2 can build, or is that, is that what it is? You, it, you're not getting enough oxygen. And your CO2 builds up, and you can get dizzy. So be careful. Um, anyway, once I got those down, I practiced with a clarinet read. And once I could get a cl clarinet mouthpiece and read. And once I got that, this started getting easier. I tried saxophone. It didn't help me a lot, but it might help some people. Saxophone's the hardest of the reed instruments that I, that I tried. Um, oboe and bassoon are crazy easy to do this. So flute, first thing I did is I got a giant cork to plug the end because the, the, the head joint takes less air if you plug this out. And if, if you're blowing less air, you don't have to push as much out before you, you know, have to breathe. So... And the first thing I did, and this is all the flute teachers are out there are going to go, no! The first thing I did was roll in like crazy, which is really bad. And I made this hole really, really, really tiny. And the whole point with getting this hole really tiny, which is why I rolled in. You, in the end, you want to roll back out, so be careful. The reason you want the hole tiny is because, you, uh, for me, what worked was trying to get that smooth sound on the reeds and then the head joint before I worried about tone. I tried to get an even sound. Didn't matter if it was airy or what, I tried to get an even smooth sound. Then I started backing up and widening the hole to get bigger. And I'm not smooth, but it was. And then as I got better at that, I just did the head joint.
You can probably still hear my hiccup. But I swear, it, you can get rid of that. It just takes a lot of practice. Um, practice getting it smooth, smooth, smooth. Once you get it smooth, start trying to widen your hole. Now, when I was just playing a minute ago, I was using a small hole again. Because I haven't practiced in so long, I've lost it. I've completely lost it. So going back into the flute. So once you get that, try it in the flute. And try just holding a sound. Whoops. <laughs> so that was uh, three or four breaths there. Um, and once you get that, try a simple tune. And um, I'm not tonguing anything. Uh, you you can you can tongue while you're exhaling. I haven't been able to. I can't tongue when I'm circular breathing when I'm doing the tongue part because my tongue's busy. So if you need a tongue while you're circular breathing, don't inhale. Uh, only inhale when you're slurring. You know, unless there's something I don't know. Um, so that's the flute part. Now. Now going back to the water and the straw. With all that in mind, I came up with this method that may or may not work, and I can't test it because now that I've gone through all that, the water's easy. I could do this all day. You can just do it all day long. I mean, I can, you know, because, well, you still get dizzy. So... I couldn't do this to begin with. I thought, what would make this easier? Well, it's the small hole concept. So if you're trying to learn to circular breathe, I recommend trying this. I I don't know for sure if it would work, but eh, bite your straw. Ah, I think that would totally work. That's like an oboe read. If, if you if you have if you have a smaller not aperture, I don't know what the word is. Smaller opening. If you're not putting out as much air, it's easier. All right, I took four breaths while I was doing that. So, where's my camera? That's my straw. See? So if you want to try the straw method, don't do it their way. Do it my way. <laughs> um, and that helped. And I'm thinking that's it. I think those are all my tips for circular breathing. I did it and uh, I did start sounding good I, I got it to where you couldn't tell it was it was pretty smooth and then once I got that I, I was done so so I hope this helps anyone who actually wants to use it in something um, don't forget to stop and actually breathe because it's, it's I don't want you passing out it, you can still pass out even though you're inhaling just you can okay so be careful have fun. Bye.